All right, everybody, welcome to another edition of Millennials Are Killing Capitalism Live. Uh, for folks who haven't been to other ones, you know, we've, we're a podcast that's been around for six years. We have over 240 episodes. Hopefully those episodes are good resources for political education, which means you use them with your, your friends, your comrades, other folks to help um, have conversations use them in your organizations, et cetera, right? And so today we have something really fun, which is we're going to be talking to two members of EVE 6, uh, Max, Collin, Max Collins and John Siebels. Um, you know, before we get into that, just want to remind folks to do the silly YouTube things, which is like, like the video, um, subscribe to the channel, which doesn't cost any money, but does help us and, uh, you know, share it with folks. And this is a conversation with a couple of folks. Uh, you know, I'm sure a lot of our audience is familiar with their work, um, most famously for their hit single, smash hit single in the 90s, Inside Out. Um, and so I'm going to bring them to the stage and we're going to talk about why they support Free Palestine. So John and Max, welcome to Millennials Are Killing Capitalism Live. Hey, thanks for having us. us. Right on. So we have a couple of early comments in the chat. If Eve Six has a million fans, I am one. And if they have a million and one fans, I am one. So right on, me too. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to shout out that on a personal note, this is a really fun conversation for me. I was in high school when your you know first big single and album came out. And so uh, I've been sharing that I was going to be interviewing you guys with like high school friends and stuff like that. And so it was a... Uh, Find kind of a no way moment, but then also it was sort of funny because, you know, people don't necessarily think of you two as uh, if they if they just know the music specifically as political activists or people that would be, you know, automatically in solidarity for, uh, you know, supporting free Palestine. And, um, you know, both of you have been supporting in support of sorry, have been tweeting in support of Palestinian liberation for at least a couple of years now. Um, you know, I kind of went back and looked and it looked like maybe the save uh, Sheikh Jarrah moment was one where that really kind of caught both of your attention. It was certainly one moment where you started to, you know, send out more messages and support. So I was just wondering if you could talk a little bit about for each of you, how you became kind of politicized around this specific cause and what convinced you it was something that you needed to speak up about. Uh, yeah. Do you, you want to take it, Max, or? Well, I was just going to say, I, I've uh, I've been following John's political lead for about <laughs> eight years. <clears throat> um, and yeah, I'm the uh, I'm 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 the one who tweets at the Eve six account. I'm the, I'm the blowhard. Um, but but John is the <laughs> is the person, you know, who most singularly has um, affected the way that I see things politically, which started, you know, probably close to 10, 10 years ago, um, smoking lots of cigars on, on tour. <laughs> um, and, uh, so yeah, uh, he should take the lead here, but I want to <laughs> at the outset. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I think we can, w w I think we're going to go in more into the, the backstory of, of, of the, uh, you know, radicalization, I guess, if you want to put it that way. Um, but in, in, for, for this uh, specifically, I think what really um, uh, the mo the defining moment for me was, you know, we're, we're we've become pretty good friends with uh, Mike Preisner and Abby Martin of Empire Files and, uh, you know, watching watching their Gaza Fights for Freedom film uh, was was that moment for me. Um, and, um, you know, if anyone hasn't seen it, I think probably most people watching this have, have seen it. But if you haven't go go check it out, it's it's on YouTube. You can you can find it everywhere. Um, but their their work around the subject is has just been incredible. And, um, you know, watching that, it's just, you know, feeling this deep sense of just sadness and, you know, and and, and everything else. Um, and then that that led me to 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 diving deeper into the you know into the the whole issue and uh, really trying to understand the history of it and uh, you know really coming to see this as you know 
colonization and a national liberation struggle and and you know uh apartheid and ethnic cleansing and you know and, and all these things and and you know primarily backed by our own government here um so i think that that you know that uh that was where i sort of got on it and then you know yes when 2021 during uh, the Sheikh Jarrah incident, like, you know, um, I, we were, we were already right there, <laughs> you know, and, and had, had an understanding of, of what, what this is. And, you know, it's, uh, uh, yeah, we, I think we were just, we were already in that place where we were like, you know, uh, understanding of, of, of the situation, you know, I appreciate that because I think it also, um, speaks to the fact like you both have been pretty firm and i know max yeah you you tweet from the eve six account as we've already said and like i'm sure you know you've had people that get upset with you that uh as we all encounter you know these sort of zionist talking points there's a lot of myths that sort of have to be debunked and stuff like that and um i think for people who haven't studied it that deeply like yeah it's very easily just sort of like tweet out free palestine but then when you get the the backlash of that um you know sometimes people quickly kind of walk it back we've seen this right we've seen this with a lot of um you know maybe celebrities yeah. or influencers or other folks where um you know they they might initially show solidarity because obviously you know i can think of some examples of um, who was it? Uh, I think Justin Bieber tweeted out like a picture, like stand with Israel or something like that. And it was literally an image of Gaza, like totally bombed out, you know, and as soon as people pointed it out, he like deleted it. Right. And, and edited his, you know, thing. And I think that, um, you know, obviously that's, that's really unfortunate, um, when that happened. So I just want to give like, you know, just props to the both of you for kind of also thinking through and preparing yourselves uh before you engage it because um you know it's definitely something that you know folks very often give some solidarity to and then backtrack on and you guys have been very consistent on this issue so i just want to shout that out um Thanks. yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I think it's important to be unequivocal and um you know simple and unequivocal <clears throat> and uh you know, especially because of all the sort of like um, ambivalence that you see from, you know, whatever public figures where there tends to be this sort of like both sides swing. <clears throat> and um, yeah, so we're we want to make sure we're, you know, we realize we're we're an alternative rock band account and that. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> and that there is, you know, people view us speaking on this stuff. Some um, think of it as kind of absurd, and maybe it is in a way, but it's also like, um, for better or worse, we do have, have an online platform, and we think the way we do, and and we use it as, as we see fit in as much as that can possibly be helpful or maybe change a mind or whatever yeah right on and you know appreciate that and you know i mean here like even part of the reason to have this conversation with both of you honestly is because you're coming from you you, you know you have a different group of folks that pay attention to the work that you do for all kinds of different reasons they like your music they think you're funny on twitter whatever else it is right and you know i i also encourage people while they're here to check out some of the other conversations that we're ha we're having as well we had a conversation last week with decolonized palestine which is a couple of folks in uh, ramallah in the west bank where they're laying out a bunch of stuff debunking a bunch of myths that's really helpful and also earlier today we had a conversation with um organizers with palestine action who are really talking about taking direct action to shut down um elbit systems and the broader sort of u.s israeli war machine which i think are really important actions that people can take as they get more politicized as they get comfortable with taking you know different levels of risk and things like that around an issue like this but i think that you all play an important role in you know bringing this issue to a larger audience that you know may not 
um, have any real understanding of it either. So I appreciate that as well. So let's go back a little bit further. Um, John, I know you and I have exchanged messages a little bit over the years. Um, I just want to thank you. You've been a supporter of ours on Patreon for a number of years, and we do appreciate that. Um, and, you know, I know you've been pretty interested in socialist politics for a long time and have done, I believe, some organizing yourself. Um, I've kind of followed some of those things, too. And, you know, John, as you mentioned, uh, I mean, Max, as you mentioned, you kind of follow John's lead on these things to some extent. Um, you know, uh, so I, I was wondering if you could each share a little bit deeper about those kind of political journeys. And John, maybe you you start a little bit. Yeah. 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 So um, I'm going to I'm going to flip this back around a little bit. And, you know, I, I, I think that like, you know, so many people over these past like whatever, eight, eight years or so, um, you know, the, the Bernie Sanders movement did did a lot for uh, for people. And and it and, you know, in all fairness, I think it was Max who was, you know, first like you got to check out this this guy, Bernie Sanders. And, you know, obviously uh, we've all uh, <laughs> we, we've all moved past that uh, that point. Um, but, you know, I think watching you know, think thinking that there was a possibility to actually have some change under our current system, you know, which uh, at that at that time uh, was naive. But that that was that was what I thought, you know, and and watching, um, you know, watching just the complete like kneecap of of that movement um, is, I think, really what led me to 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 the realization that there, yeah, that there is no, you know, there is no solving this, this system. And, and, and what is that system? That, that system's capitalism, you know? Um, and, um, you know, that, that's what led me to just exploring, you know, exploring what other people were saying and, and, and exploring, you know, al alternative, you know, ways of thinking, um, and and of course that that led me down more of a socialist path and i think you know around around 2020 i guess you know once you know once obviously the second round of of bernie sanders was was kneecapped um uh you know i i was like fuck this i'm 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 going to i'm going to join a socialist party i'm going to you know i'm i'm going to start really understanding and learning and and um and talking to people and doing what i can to you know uh the small little part i can play to to try to affect change and you know it, it probably started out I, i'll say this i've always been anti-war always like like you know i i was we were you know our early 20s when when the uh uh, you know, post you know, like 9-11 and when the Iraq war started and, and all of that. Right. And I was always vehemently against, you know, Iraq, Afghanistan um, and, and, and all these wars. And, you know, I think I, I definitely saw it as like, oh, this is like this is, you know, sort of in a simplistic terms, like this is a war. This is a war for oil. This is a war for, <laughs> you know, these different different things. And um and and then once I started to really s sort of uh, study and learn, you know, ab about uh, you know in, in a more socialist direction, it's like I really made those connections of of what what that what that is, you know. It's like you know in, imperialism and you know and, and hegemony and in you know just the 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 awful shit that is done around the world, you know, at, 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 that which 99.9% .9 of the time leads back to, to our government, you know? And, and if we want, you know, uh, if we want to have, you know, a, a transformation of, of our government here, like, <laughs> you know, uh, for, for our, for, for the people living here, like we need, you know, we, we need a transformation of, of, of the entire world. We need to, we need to put an end to imperialism, colonialism, you know, um, uh, all the, you know, all the awful shit that is being done, um, to the rest of the world at the expense, you know, of so many people, so many lives. Um, and so I think that that's, you know, ha having kind of gone down that, that road, 
I joined a party. I, I, I started learning. And, you know, shortly after that, the 2020, you know, uprisings started. And, and for, for those of us who are like musicians and stuff, we like, we couldn't tour, <laughs> you know, we couldn't do anything. And, and, you know, I was, uh, I live in Austin, Texas now, but I was in downtown LA at the time. And, you know, I, I had already gotten politically active and then it was like the, the uprising started and I, I was in the streets every single day for, <laughs> you know, three months. And, and, and I, I learned so much during that time and, um, you know, starting to go from, you know, uh, beyond just like, okay, we need to like tr transform our society we need to provide healthcare. We need to, you know, uh, we need to understand the root of, of homelessness and, you know, all these other things to, um, you know, to, to really understanding like, you know, like, uh, like in order to have this transformation, we, we need, you know, uh, we need full liberation for, you know, for, for, for all oppressed nations. And we need, you know, um, we need to, uh, you know, we need to solve, we need to solve the problem of our own, <laughs> you know, our own colonization here and the things that have been done in its name. Um, so anyways, I, I mean, I, I, like you said, we, you know, we've gone back and forth for the last couple of years, you, you know, y'all have been a, a, a huge resource for me. You know, I would like, I would like listen to the audio book of like black Jacobins, you know, and then like, listen to you guys talk about the, the, the Haitian revolution. And, you know, I, I think that it's, it, you know, one, once you start learning the, the truth and once, once you start seeing the world for how it is, you know, there, there's no, there's no going back. And I, and, and ever since that happened, I've just been, been hungry to, to learn as much as I can and to just, you know, uh, again, like Max said, as a, uh, a, a middle-aged white man in an alternative rock band, you know, uh, do whatever little part that I can to, to, to try to affect some change and, 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 and affect some, some, some opinions and, you know, stuff like that. So right on. John had a really interesting conversation with um, someone who'd seen one of our Instagram posts. Um, and I don't, John mainly runs the Eve six Instagram, but he's been putting um, free Palestine stuff up on there. And we had um, a, a, a fan from the UK reach out um, in good faith, a Jewish guy, um, confused about our, our stance and, um, and about what, what these marches for Palestine are and what they're against and what they're not against. <clears throat> and, um, John spent about an hour and a half on the phone with him, uh, talking to him, explaining to him the way we see things. And this guy was under some really um, kind, kind of sad, but understandable uh, misunderstandings about, about what, what free Palestine means, what Palestinian liberation means. Um, and yeah, I, I think, I mean, that's, that's an, an example of something um, I take my lead from John in, in more ways than just politics, but like the fact that I think he was willing to talk to this dude and explain to him that, no, we we're we're walking next to our Jewish friends uh, when we do this. And this guy was like, would I be safe at an Eve six show? You know, if I, you know, just really. And it's like, um, but it sounded like at the end of that conversation, um, you know, they'd had a lot of understanding and some scales had fallen from from his eyes about it so yeah i mean that's maybe one one example of of the way that a couple middle-aged <laughs> white dudes mm -hmm. sort of alternative rock band can at least you know uh you know get 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 it into the mind of of someone who's asking asking questions in good faith and and confused not because they're an idiot, but because 
we've all been had a steady stream, a main line of propaganda for our whole lives about this. So, um, and certainly, you know, probably more than ever right now. So um, anyway, I just wanted to, to share that tidbit. That's a great story. And I think that, I mean, it's so true, right? I mean, it, I think, you know, Max from, you know, the Twitter account, you've talked about how, you know, in a lot of ways, this is very simple. It's very clear cut. But it is also true that in order to arrive at that understanding of how clear cut it is, which I do believe is correct, that there's a lot of like myths and, you know, misconceptions that we're all indoctrinated with that you have to kind of work through. Um, and I so I, I appreciate one, John, you doing that one on one with a, an individual fan, but also, um, you know, just like that. Yeah, that's just an important thing for people to understand here is that um, it is true. We will have to have those kinds of conversations with all kinds of people who we can actually, um, you know, convince to the right side of this issue if they if it's a good faith conversation. You can tell pretty quickly when it's a bad faith conversation, usually um, yep. mm -hmm. because the the walls and the myths that go up are, you know, being just presented in a certain way that it just becomes quite clear um, that some people are just not interested in a serious conversation about this. But, uh, you know, among a lot of people, it's true. It's it's important to kind of demystify and to get through these myths that we've all been taught about, um, you know, what Israel is, what it what, you know, the the reality is for Palestinians, for people in Gaza um, and so on. And so I appreciate that a lot. Um, I want to pivot to another thing, which I, is kind of it's just interesting to me. It's a, it's on a little bit of a different topic, but I think it's also um, a reflection in some ways of, you know, maybe this process of politicization that you all have gone through, um, which is that a few years ago, you led an effort around um, Spotify, you know, and for folks who don't know this, I'm sure most people do, you know, you had this song, um, Inside Out, people might call it the Blender song or the Heart in a Blender song, but, um, <laughs> you know, a huge hit. And, uh, you know, obviously for folks, you know, I think it came out in 98 or something like that around that time, yep. you know, and so if, if folks were alive, then then they definitely know it. And if not, they've probably, you know, seen it in a movie or something like that. Um, but, you know, obviously this is a huge record right that gets a ton of streams still like it had a lot of streams i think a hundred million or something like that on on spotify or something like that and i believe that at at the point at least when you all led this effort like you had received maybe no money for this but but certainly not very much and so and i so i don't know i i thought it'd be interesting if you could share a little bit about you know kind of the effort around that and that context for people who don't um you know people who aren't in the music industry and might not know i imagine this is also you mentioned john about you know capitalism being a bad thing and i think you know this is a kind of manifestation of it within music today so yeah absolutely i i think that um you know i what I don't want to do right now is go into the weeds of uh, the payment systems of, of Spotify and how that relates to record labels and recouping and all these different things, because I'll just say uh, it's just it's really fucked up. <laughs> uh, and uh, we could do a whole uh, two hour episode just just getting into the weeds of, of, of you know, the structure of the music industry and and. Uh, you know how bad it is for artists um uh all, all around but um that particular um campaign um was uh organized by um a group uh called uh, uh united musicians and allied workers um Numa, and um and so it it you know it, it was a uh it was an organized effort it wasn't just you know it wasn't just out of out of nowhere um and um you know it, it's the the demand was you know the, the demand was that, that that spotify needs to pay a, a cent per stream um and uh you know right now they pay about 0. 0.0034 cents per stream uh and you know and then if you have a label you got to split split that with your label or the label takes most of it if it's a major label etc um so 
um you know the demand was one cent per stream but the 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 point was to bring awareness to just you know the exploitation of of this this model um and uh you know even if you own your records uh, uh, you know 100 percent, you can go do your own math on that it's just you know unless unless you unless you own it 100 percent, and you are literally getting you know millions and millions and millions of streams um it's 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 just not it's not something that's ever going to you know pay the bills um so uh you know to, to me i think I, I i would just want to stress the point about like you know, uh, from that campaign that, that it, it, it was an organized effort by lots and lots of, of artists. Uh, it was planned out. It was, you know, it was a concerted effort. It wasn't just sort of something that, that sp sprung up organically. You know, it was, it was a lot of, a lot of artists coming together to, to, to organize, um, uh, around this. And, um, so I, I think that, uh, you know, also, um, you know, we uh, recently uh, have put out or signed on to this uh, Artists Against Apartheid letter. Um, and again, or organized effort. I, you know, I, I helped in, in, in that effort. And, you know, I think that um, when we talk about like artists organizing, um, I think that, you know, the, 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 the go-to thing is like, oh, you know, it's like labor organizing and it is partly that, you know, artists as like workers and, you know, being exploited and, you know, and there's, a, there's a lot that needs to be uh, fought for there. But I think also it's, it's about artists coming together and organizing, you know, and our, our artists have this ability to get, get messages out there to, to different people. And, and, you know, that, that maybe aren't politicized or, uh, you know, uh, I mean, art, art and music is, is culture. Right. And, and if, you know, uh, I think if artists can come together and, and, and really, you know, I, I think in a lot of ways, because the music industry is what it is, it's controlled by the rich. Right. So it, it's, it, you know, um it's uh intentionally created to foster this environment where artists basically are promoting the the you know uh the side of 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 the rich right um and and i think that you know um it's important for artists to come together because and 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 a lot of times if you go against that narrative you know there's there's going to be a lot of a lot of pushback and and a lot of being like blacklisted or 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 whatever else so i think that beyond organizing as a you know labor concept i think that artists need to organize to have you know to have alliances to where to where we can push back on these things and and have you know um uh and have a unified front in 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 you know in what we're what we're trying to say because people are afraid they're afraid of the the, the backlash you know um and i think that it it is it, you know we we joke about just you know being an alternative rock band and that's and that's what we are but i think that you know if you look at the history of 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 of, of music and poetry and you know all these different things you know you, you look at the the role that say the you know uh, the South African artists played, you know, uh, during, during apartheid. If you look at, uh, you know, uh, uh, even, you know, a Nina Simone or a Paul Robeson or, a, you know, these, these, these different like radical artists over time, um, you know, it, it's like they, they, they did play a part in, in what was going on at that time. And, uh, and what I would love to see is more, uh, you know, a, a more unified front uh amongst these artists because i i know you know i know we're i know we're out there i i you know and i know what people think and i want i want us all to come together and have the courage to 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 be able to to speak out uh, 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 you know about all these different things whether it's simply you know exploitation of of our business uh our industry or you know more you know uh more political uh issues like Free Palestine.
I feel like I was a little bit rambling, but but I was, I was trying to trying to get all my uh, all my thoughts there. <laughs> no, right on. Uh, yeah, I mean, do you, do either of you want to say a little bit more about that artist against apartheid campaign, and you know, just you know, anything about it, and maybe some of the folks that are involved in that? Yeah. So, um, I mean, uh, since it launched a couple days ago, I mean, we have over seven thousand uh you know musicians poets writers uh uh foreign dignitaries like you know that 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 have signed signed on to this um and uh so yeah if you haven't seen it yet you can you can find it uh if you, it's the the link is on our uh, on our instagram page um but um i would definitely you know encourage people uh, you know artists of 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 any sort to to go check out this letter and and to sign on um you know uh a lot of the you know typical people that you would expect uh, the Roger Waters and the you know low key and you know the more like activist type artists are on there but we also have like Lil Yachty and, and like people like that you know so um you know I, I guess I would just encourage people to check it out check out the statement um sign on to it uh no matter how you know big or small of a, a of a following you might have or or whatever like it, it it all makes a difference um so um yeah right on and i just put the a link to that in the chat for folks as well and i'll add it to the show description after we close this as well so people watching the replay can can catch that um max is there anything you wanted to add to that no not really <laughs> right on <laughs> <laughs> um so you know i was one just curious this is more a curiosity of mine but i i know we also did include your patreon in in the show notes as well you know we've talked about some of these issues within the music industry um, you know, Patreon is something that we use. We encourage folks who are listening to go check out and support our Patreon as well. Um, but could you just say a little bit about, you know, the why behind that as musicians? You know, I mean, you know, some people would say, oh, just go work on a label or whatever. And so I'm just curious what, what led to that for you all. Yeah. Um, well, a big, a big part of it is this, the, the, streaming system that we that we kind of touched on and uh how horrible it is and um i think we john and i started talking about this maybe i don't know like a year ago a friend of ours was encouraging us to to try it out for music and most most artists that have patreons kind of use it to put up extras or like, uh, you know, behind the scenes footage, hangouts with fans or whatever, stuff like that, uh, demos. And we were like, well, what if we, what if we use this as, you know, the place where we put master recordings, you know, like the only place where we put master recordings and, um, this little like lyrical essay thing that I'm doing too. Like we just, we use it to put the art, here you know and it's not it's not promotional it's not extras it's it's the project that we're working on and um we decided to start doing it about what five months ago yeah now. six months ago yeah and like it's been really cool i mean it's you know it's it's a small scale and we have, I don't know, like how many subscribers? I think we have about 650 or so like active subscribers. Yeah. Um, but it's like, okay, these are people who really give a shit about what we're doing. These are people who either remember us um, or have discovered us more recently for whatever reason and are interested in what, in what we're doing. And we've been because of that i think just like writing with kind of a new purpose making stuff with with a new purpose um whether it's the music or the prose i'll put that in very strong quotes but um and we're actually you know seeing some money from recorded music uh which is you know something that we were not seeing uh before five five months ago i think 
from those, you know, 1.5 million average Spotify plays or whatever, our the three of us would see about six hundred dollars. So would then get split three ways, probably a little bit less because um, there are producer points and stuff that are taken out. So, um, and now we actually are making money that we can put into doing like real ass recordings, and you know, taking the time to do it right, and you know, really being able to forge the music the way the way that we want to, like like we could with the backing of a label but this time we don't have to like recoup anything you know um and it's it's i know i'm speaking for both of us because we've talked about it it's it's inspiring you know it's been it's been really cool and so our our plan is to um i think we have about five songs up right now or something like that we're going to make a record a full-length album 10 12 songs and we're going to make physical options available again only there cds and vinyl and the songs are all downloadable there now as well but um yeah i mean every time we put out a song this thing grows um every time we put out some writing this thing grows and you know it it feels it feels it feels good it's especially that we were getting a lot of why don't you just put it up I'll put stuff on bandcamp for a minute there we were like, oh, we're kind of trying to try this new thing and just see how it works. And now Bandcamp has been predictably, you know, jettisoned by corporate interests as well. Not that Patreon is like some good company or something like that. <laughs> for, for what we're doing, <laughs> I mean, fuck Patreon too. For what we're <laughs> for what we're doing, it's appropriate. It feels good, and um, yeah. I, I think that uh, like just sort of like looking at it like philosophically, it's like it, it's like we're not like th this really is uh, the people who care supporting us, you know, and we've we've said over and over again, if you know, if you cannot afford to subscribe to another thing right now, which is completely understandable in the times we live in just hit us up and we'll send you the songs. And I mean, I've sent countless like Dropbox links to, to people uh, that just, that just want the songs. And so I, I think that it's like looking at it a little bit less from the perspective of like, this is how we're selling our music now. And, and, and more like, you know, this is, this is how people can support, you know, pe people that care can can support us and what we're doing. Um, I, I think it's just I, I don't know. It makes it it makes it feel better, <laughs> you know. Totally. Uh, and, and and that's a good point. And it's also like, you know, people can kind of like conflate or confuse, you know, like like when when Lars from Metallica was like doing the whole fuck Napster thing and people like, no, our, our issue is we don't want these like this these massive corporations that are engaged in like really dubious like you know probably antitrust violations with major labels and and everything else um doing like flagrant exploitation like we will happily send you downloads free downloads of of our music we're just we're just not playing that game we're doing our tiny little you know uh part in saying fuck you to that that uh system but yeah it feels you know pe people have been emailing because we've said it we say it on twitter and instagram um if you can't you know if you can't become a five dollar patron we totally get it and we'll we'll send you a download and share it and put it on the internet and whatever um so yeah that's that's an important aspect to this little little project. We want we want people to have it. We just don't want to be, you know, supporting these Leviathan um, shitty companies. Right on. Uh, so and we kind of touched on this up front, but the other question that I had for you, and then we'll get to a couple things maybe from the audience. Um, you know, one was, uh, you know, you know, we've talked about how you guys have been, you took this stand, you know, on regarding Palestine. Um, you know, you kind of laid out how you got there and stuff like that. Um, you know, we're we're in a time where 
also f- folks who are supporting Palestine are facing backlash from certain platforms or certain groups or, or individuals, organizations, etc. Um, and, you know, I think it's important for us to say, obviously, we should be crystal clear that this is nothing compared to what it is to try to be surviving in Gaza right now, or even what it is to be Palestinian in the United States right now. Um, and the level of, you know, racism, violence, um, you know, you name it, that people can be subjected to. But I'm just interested for you, um, again, you know, if there's anything you would want to underscore about, you know, kind of how difficult this was as a decision for you as a group and, you know, why you feel like you've been able to stay kind of firm with it and, you know, anything that you could offer to other folks who may be a little bit fearful about, um, you know, like, I don't want to take this stand because I'm afraid that X, Y, or Z might happen to me. Yeah. I mean, I, it's, it's understandable when people have that fear, you know, I mean, uh, I get it. I mean, like people, we, we've had that fear. We, we've yeah, had that fear. that fear. I mean, I, I texted John before I pushed out the first thing that I said about this and I was just like, you know, we're, we're going to get, you know, we're going to get, hit for this and like i just want to you know talk to you first and and he responded please do it (laughs) (laughs) and but but yeah i mean we're also in a different position than people who have you know like normal jobs or people in the entertainment industry who are you know more subject to what the opinions of you know their their bosses might be basically so um yeah i mean we definitely got a lot of people especially in that first week um you know unsubscribing (laughs) and uh unfollowing and and all of that stuff but we actually have gotten people back so or not maybe not people back but new people um who I think are maybe supporting us because we're saying this. So, um, yeah, I mean, sorry, I forget what the question was. <laughs> it's just kind of like, yeah, any, any thoughts or encouragement for other people in taking the stand as well as like, yeah, yeah what that, what that backlash is like. Yeah. Yeah. I mean the backlash, you know, we, we're going to survive people you know, calling us whatever on Twitter or, you know, like now, now is, is, is one of those moments where I think you, you, people will look back and, and think either, you know, I should have taken a stand on that and I didn't, or I did, you know, in whatever marginal way that I could. You know, I said something. Um, This is one of those moments of history because we're this is a genocide happening right now. And there are a lot of people who won't let themselves see that. You know, they just won't allow themselves to see that they obscure it in their minds. They they because it's it's it. And and I think maybe their fear to speak out makes them unwilling to to see it, too. I think both parts kind of play with each other in like arranging people's psychology around this. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, we may, we, we may not have as much to lose as some, we, we, we realize that too, you know, but, um, yeah, I mean, we can't not talk about this and, you know, we can't, you know, how can you not how you know, I, I, I get it from one standpoint, but I also, it's like you, if you're, if you look at this, if you really look at what's happening right now with, you know, open eyes, I, 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 I don't see how, how you can't come to one conclusion and be vocal about it and being vocal about it as much as we like diminish, you know, social media's import or whatever. It's like, um, or just our, you know, status in the world or whatever that is, is, is what it is. It's like people, people take cues from other people, you know, and it's like, 
oh, it's okay to say that, you know, that I've been thinking that and it's okay to say it. Okay. Okay. They're saying it. Okay. I can say it too. That's how we work. We all work that way. No one's above that, you know, you know, we're social animals. I, I think, uh, I think that's totally, totally right. And I think that for all it's, uh, bad sides. I mean, if if you just look at the, the the demographics of of what people think about this 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 situation, it's like older people that just watched Fox or CNN or MSNBC or whatever are like, yes, this is justified. Send them more weapons, like you know. And then you've got you know younger teenagers and early twenties is and and they're like no free palestine like like i don't want my money you know being spent on this and it's because you don't you don't see this shit on fox or cnn or on anything like you know it's like i mean my my feeds are just full of the most devastating like you know images that that i could have ever imagined that i would have seen you know and and um and and a lot of the, a lot of people aren't aren't seeing that you know so yeah. it, it it is it is important it is a, a new world in that way and i think that this once again go you know the, the 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 original question goes back to this idea of like as artists as artists that are on the you know on uh, you know on on the the right side of these things uh uh you know, we need to come together and we need to be prepared for these moments. You know, it's like you can't just haphazardly just like spout off an opinion. You know, it's like, the you know, the reason we could we could jump on this immediately is because we already knew we knew the history of this. We, we, we've, we've been through this and and we need to we need to come together and and be you know and be ready for 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 the next you know, for the next thing. So so that we can have, you know, uh, clear minds and clear messages about, you know, a, a, about whatever the next thing is down, down the road. Um, and I think it's really, you know, the, the, uh, again, you know, uh, just like with all organizing, you know, you have to, you have to be prepared. That's the whole, <laughs> you know, definition of the word, you know? And, um, so I would just, I, I would just, uh, implore artists to, you know, find other like-minded artists, join, you know, join groups that, that, um, you know, of people that, and other artists that, uh, that, that think like you do so that, so that we can have that, that powerful response to these situations. Yeah, right on. I don't know if there's any resources you mentioned earlier, the documentary from, um, you know, the Empire Files folks, uh, Abby Martin and uh, Mike Preisner. Are there any other resources that have been really helpful for either of you on this uh, topic that you would want to share with folks? I just watched the 1948 documentary. I think there's a yep. subtitle to it also that I forget, but I'm pretty sure if you search that, that's great. Um yeah, it's funny because I was, it's not funny, it's strange. I was like literally playing um, an acoustic set uh, for at Abby Martin's art show slash going away party when the news of the, stri the Hamas strike came in. Like it was literally, it happened during my set afterwards. I'm like talking to this guy and Abby goes up to the mic and, and says that um, they were playing the film there. Um, and people who hadn't seen it for, before were able to see it. Um, Gaza fights for freedom. Yeah, can't can't recommend that that one enough. That was John uh, sent that to me a few years ago, and and that was a big one. Um, all all of their work around this, though. I mean, you know, it, it just go go follow empire files um i mean they've been doing so much great work for so many years uh about this issue um so uh, you know definitely definitely go follow go follow empire files um but i i've uh i've been chipping away at this the uh the lobby which was the lobby us which was like an al jazeera special about you know uh just sort of some of these you know groups that <laughs> that lobby in the united states uh and uh it was like it was like basically spiked you know at, at a certain point but you can still find it on youtube so i i haven't gotten through it yet but i've, I've been starting to chip away at it it's definitely really interesting um what was the, um 
what was the pod that you sent to me recently with the uh the the uh, yeah um i i think uh uh uh, Rev left, uh, and, and gorilla history. Um, I think they've been doing some incredible work around this, uh, socialist program, um, has had some really incredible analysis. Um, I mean, all, all this, this, this is all stuff that probably anyone watching this uh, <laughs> is already, already, uh, in line with, but, um, uh, but yeah, I mean, there's, there's, uh, you know, uh, electronic intifada, I mean, there's 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 so many resources out there and people who have been doing really incredible work around this for for so many years. So. Right on, um, Sarah, just want to shout you out for becoming a patron of the show <laughs> while we were on the air. And uh, Burn asked uh, any any tours planned. So I thought I'd ask you guys <laughs> that. We have a we have one short little rip uh, coming up this week actually in uh, in the great state of Florida. Um, we're playing uh, we're playing fest uh, on the 28th in Gainesville, um, which is a long standing punk rock fest. I don't know how the hell we ended up on it, um, uh, but uh, we're they kind of put us on as a joke. I think. Yeah, yeah, but. It's it's going to be fun. There's a lot of great bands playing. It's yeah, it's going to be really fun. And then we're also playing a couple club shows around it. Uh, uh, we're playing in Jacksonville Thursday. We're playing in Tampa Friday and then Gainesville Saturday. And then, um, Orlando on Sunday. Uh, we're, uh, two of those shows, uh, Jacksonville and Tampa are with, uh, a really great band from LA called Susie true. Um, and then, uh, Orlando's with another band from Florida called Ill Star. They're really cool. Um, that's all we really have uh, touring wise, you know, before before the end of the year. And we're just kind of trying to figure out plans for next year. Right on. Well, thank you both for your time. Really appreciate you both joining us for this. Um, you know, just want to reiterate that i appreciate you all speaking out and standing up on this issue and doing so from a place of principle and you know studying and um you know staying committed to it and you know yeah i just want to shout you all out for that one more time thank you jared appreciate yeah thanks, thanks so much for having us thanks for having us yeah. on yeah no it was it was great and you know as again as folks are here just encourage them also to check out other stuff on the on the channel um, check out our back catalog of audio podcasts as well. We have several different ones that you can check out. All of the video content we've done over the last week has been dedicated to, you know, this particular struggle, providing political education around it, clarifying things for people, um, debunking some of those myths that we talk about. I definitely recommend people check out the one with uh, Decolonized Palestine because... Yeah. You know, when you listen to Palestinians talk about this, it's so much clearer than when you hear folks talk about it, you know, from our context, because we're all just we can't help but be um, burdened by the myths and the, you know, the different kind of, yeah, things that we've been taught, things that we've been indoctrinated with over the years. Mm -hmm. And so encourage folks to check that out as well. Um, but yeah, just want to, again, thank you both. And it's been great to be in conversation with you. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to the uh, Palestine Action uh, folks as well. I caught some of that and I've been following Palestine Action UK for a while. And, I, I, you know, they, they, they're just doing some incredible work. So that was, that was cool Ab that you had them on. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Folks, if they if you didn't hear that conversation this morning, it's on the uh, it's on the page now. Um, but we had, a you know, about a 90 minute conversation with um, an organizer from the UK who helped was one of the co-founders of Palestine Action as well as um, an organizer here in the United States that is helping to, to launch a, a US branch of it. Um, it's really important work that they're doing, um, brave and courageous work. And so we encourage folks to check that out as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Jared. Appreciate it. Appreciate you.